Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. An off-duty Detroit firefighter shot and killed inside his home. And now we're learning the teenager in custody for the murder lived across the street. It's finally here, the I-696 traffic shift that will impact drivers all across Metro Detroit. And a terrible crash, a suspected drunk driver behind the wheel and the heroic neighbors who did everything they could. We're glad you're with us tonight at 11. Warren Neighbors pulled a 21-year-old young man from the wreckage of his burning car, but his injuries were so severe that despite giving him CPR, he would then die at the hospital. Mar McDonald is live on Shaner near Common Road. Mara, that young man was the innocent victim in all of this. Kimberly, he sure was, and I want to show you something. Take a look. You can see the scorch marks in the grass and on the pavement. When his silver Chevy got hit, it burst into flames within seconds, but that didn't stop the neighbors out here from running to help. I was painting our living room when I heard a big kaboom and I looked out the window and seen the silver car on fire. Anne immediately dialed 911 while her neighbor, Greg Isles, who was already outside, just started running so fast he actually blew out his flip flop. I grabbed my chair and I came running across the street and smacked the window with the chair a couple of times and the window ended up breaking. Two other men rushing to help Greg. And we started pulling him out and he wasn't moving and it was then through the smoke I realized that his seatbelt was still belted and so I reached in and unbelted his seatbelt and we proceeded to drag him out. They couldn't. The black pickup truck that smashed into the Chevy hit it so hard that 21 year old needed to be lifted up and out. Then we put him over on the little piece of grass there. He was not breathing. Um, we began resuscitation. Um, one gentleman was uh, doing this is uh, hard and I was uh, breathing into his mouth. He then started breathing again. But it wouldn't last. The men continued with CPR. I was slapping his face saying, come on, stay with us, stay with us. And that's when the EMS had shown up. Police suspect the driver of the black pickup was drunk. The driver in the Chevy, the innocent victim. His injuries so severe, he was dead on arrival at the hospital. To find out that he'd passed away, um, I was just beside myself. I did everything I could and uh, I do it again in a second. I just I'm sorry for his family. Back here live, the Warren police have the driver of that black pickup truck in custody. They've taken a blood sample. They suspect DUI. They're waiting for the test results to confirm that. Kimberly Devin, back to you. Mar, is there any idea? Do you have any idea if that truck's tried to stop? There are are no marks from that truck, Kimberly, uh, and police are telling us it does not appear that the driver of that pickup ever tapped the brake. Back to you. But amazing that those complete strangers didn't hesitate to go in and try to help that young man. That's it's tough. All right, Mara. Yeah. A teenager being held in custody tonight in connection with the murder of Detroit firefighter Jack Wiley II, who was found shot and killed inside his home. Jermont Terry live tonight with the new information about this teenager. Jermont. Devin, tonight the man arrested for Wiley's murder is sitting in police lockup, but he will soon step before a judge and answer to the charge of murder. And tonight we're learning that Wiley knew this 18 year old very well. In fact, he lived right across the street. All is quiet once again in the Rosedale Park neighborhood where off-duty Detroit firefighter Jack Wiley II was murdered. Two days after family found Wiley shot to death inside his house, his family's overwhelmed. It was a bittersweet moment. You know, it's, they caught the guy, but in the end, my baby is still gone. That arrest involves an 18-year-old who police say was no stranger to Wiley. I can say that uh, we believe uh, the victim was acquainted with this individual. Sources say the team behind bars stayed on the same block. In fact, in the house where his family was recently evicted from. He's kind of strange. This 18-year-old stood out to neighbors. Walks up and down the street every morning, and uh, he'd be looking up and down driveways. Two days before the murder, Roger Addison saw and heard that teenager at Wiley's front door. He just, just knocked on the door viciously. I mean, when I say viciously, it's like almost breaking the glass. The teen did not get in that night, 
But this week, police say the teen returned and left only after killing Wiley. Police say the teen stole items, including Wiley's SUV, then torched it. On Thursday, word came of the arrest. It leaves many relieved, but still saddened by the void on the block. I'm gonna miss him uh, uh, just sitting in his chair and just saying hi to me and waving at me. So neighbors tell me that Wiley had compassion for what they considered a troubled teen. He would often talk to him and help him out in that neighborhood. Uh, tonight, there's still unclear exactly what the motive is in all of this. Reporting live, Jermont Terry, Local 4. So Jermont, I'm curious whether police believe that this teenager acted alone in this case. That is the big question. It's still an open investigation, Devin, but we are hearing that police are looking for two additional people no. involved in this, just not clear what their involvement was. Okay, Jermont. Hundreds gathered at Greater Grace Temple this morning to say their final goodbyes to fallen Wayne County Sheriff's Sergeant Lee Smith. <laughs> Sergeant Smith was killed last week when he was hit by a hit and run driver while jogging in Westland. The 26 year veteran was set to retire in October. His fellow deputies talked about his dedication and kindness. He has raised the bar so high that when I said there will never be another Lee, meant that from the bottom of my heart. Sergeant Smith will be buried at Detroit Memorial Park West Cemetery in Redford. The man charged in his death is due back in court next week. Detroit Mayor Duggan is joining a group of Detroit drivers and taking the fight over Detroit's sky high auto insurance rates to court. In a new lawsuit, the mayor is trying to have Michigan's no fault law declared unconstitutional. I no longer have any faith in Lansing to do the right thing. In the 1970s, the trial lawyers fought to have it declared unconstitutional because they thought they were going to lose money from not having lawsuits. Today, the trial lawyers are fighting to keep no fault in place because they're making millions off of uh, the system, which tells you everything you need to know. This lawsuit comes after the mayor's proposed bill to overhaul no fault insurance was voted down last November by a vote of 63 to 45 in the state house. Plans have been finalized to honor Aretha Franklin with a free tribute concert the night before her funeral. More than 20 singers will take the stage at Shane Park August 30th from 6 p.m. until 9 p.m. Performers include Gladys Knight, The Four Tops, and Johnny Gill. While the concert is free to the public, tickets are required for admission. You can get tickets online through Ticketmaster beginning Monday at 10. Each guest will be allowed a maximum of two passes. We've posted the entire lineup of performers on our website at clickondetroit.com. I think that'll be a hot ticket. I think so. You with me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, next phase of headaches on I-696 gets underway tomorrow morning. Eastbound I-696 shifts to the new westbound lanes from Woodward to I-94. So three lanes will be open. The only exit ramps, however, will be Dequender, Mound, Grosbeck, and I-94. We should also mention all of the 696 on ramps in Macomb County, all of them will be closed. Projects set to be finished in November. Fun, fun, fun. A tabloid with a safe filled with damaging stories about President Trump. How the National Enquirer could play a crucial role in the federal investigation involving hush money payments. And it could be the strongest storm to hit Hawaii in a quarter century. What residents are doing to prepare for Hurricane Lane. Ben. Quite a change compared to what we've got here. Very comfortable conditions starting tomorrow morning. Not quite as cool, but the heat is just around the corner. We'll look at that in our next rain chance coming up. All right, Ben, but first, an innocent man killed when two men drag racing crash into his car, who deputies are now trying to find that they hope can lead them to that missing driver. Next. 